What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we're in this cool situation where there's been a bunch that has been revealed for Marvel Champions. And there are a bunch of things coming thick and fast. So I think it is about time that we updated the release schedule. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to go over the release schedule for Marvel Champions, the living card game. We will, at the end of the video, just mention those rumors, which at this stage seem, especially a few of them, pretty much confirmed. But we are going to largely focus on the things which are absolutely confirmed. Now, a quick addendum here, so to speak. Quick appendix. These are subject to change. We are coming out of a pandemic, things are being delayed, and also these are not always released in the same time in every country. So these are the dates we have been given. Remember, Fancy Flight Games only give dates in terms of months. And this is what we know at the moment, but they are subject to change and not every country will get them at the same time. Alrighty, good. So there are two which have just been released, which have just made their way out into the world. And they are Star-Lord and Gamora. Now, at this stage, you should be able to go and pick this up. Now, I'm not saying you will. They sell out here and there. But in the early days of Marvel Champions, when I first got into the game, I was a few weeks late actually buying the core set. I'll be honest with you, for purely financial reasons, when it launched, I just couldn't afford to get it. Then it did come to a stage when I could, and I could start picking up the hero packs. And it was literally a couple weeks after release, and it was hard to pick up some of the early hero packs. It was sad. However, nowadays that does not seem to be the case anymore. Star-Lord, remember, is that hero that is all built around taking extra encounter cards. And my review of this one is up, so you can go and check that out on the channel. Essentially, you've got some super powerful combos, but you have to take extra encounter cards. So you can have some nuts turned, but you can absolutely be punished. Gamora is also out, and I am unfortunately sad to say I have not been able to get my review of Gamora up yet. I apologize. I am slightly sad about this. I have been playing through with Gamora. I am a Adoring Gamora. Hopefully the review for that will be up end of this week or early next week. But yeah, Gamora, awful lot of fun. The general theory with Gamora is that she can basically do everything. When you play an attack event, you remove a threat. When you play a thwart event, you deal a damage. You can basically do whatever you like. And you can also include up to six attack and or thwart events from any other aspect in your deck. So essentially, Gamora comes in able to either deal lots of damage or do some thwarting, and that is very, very cool indeed. I also need to give a shout out to the fact, and I still love that the card designers did this, they put Nebula as both the signature ally and the nemesis minion for the Gamora hero pack. I find that very fun indeed. Now, the next official release is scheduled for June, so should be very, very soon. This is Drax. Now, I know some people have got their hand on Drax already. I have not got my hand on Drax already, which is very sad. Hopefully, I will in the not-too-distant future. As it stands at the moment, I, I can't buy this. Some people can. Some people can't. I don't think it's actually gone on official release yet. So, hopefully, in the not-too-distant future, I will be able to get my hand on it. But Drax is, you know, the, the next of the Guardians. That is kind of the whole point. We are doing the Guardians thing at the moment. And Drax's thing is vengeance counters. When the villain attacks you, you place a vengeance counter to a maximum of three. Or draw a card, if you can't. But after you change to Alter Ego form, you remove all vengeance counters. And heal two damage for each vengeance counter removed in this way. But then obviously there are a bunch of cards which really do depend on how many vengeance counters you've actually got. So there's a real back and forth here of... I want to keep vengeance counters on. But then I can kind of move and heal and um, that's kind of awkward. So yeah... That's going to be fun, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be an awful lot of fun. After Drax, we are really finishing off the Guardians of the Galaxy with Venom. Of course, by the time we've had Star-Lord, Gamora, and Drax, not to mention, of course, that we then had Rocket and Groot in Galaxy's Most Wanted, they are your five, so to speak, of your classic Guardians. Now, look, I've read many, 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 many Guardians of the Galaxy comics. I am sure a bunch of you have as well. 
We all know, if you read the comics, there are many, many different Guardians of the Galaxy. However, the main five is done at that point. So we end up with Venom. And again, certainly in terms of recent runs of Guardians of the Galaxy, Venom should be your, your next choice, so to speak, the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. When we are talking about Venom, we are not talking about the big, bad, baddie Venom, the Spider-Man villain, the one from the movie. We are talking about Agent Venom, who is, of course, your, well, your Guardians of the Galaxy hero. It's Flash Thompson with the Venom suit. Yes, I know it's a symbiote, not a suit. Shh. But the whole point of Venom is basically weapons. And that sounds like an awful lot of fun. You can have an additional upgrade with the restricted keyword, which sounds like an awful lot of fun. In hero mode, you can take a damage to generate a resource. And when you're setting up, you can discard from the top of your deck until you discard a weapon upgrade and add it to your hand. And then, of course, we've got multiple very good weapons, which are going to be coming in along those lines you know things like multi-gun for instance or venom's pistol so if you want to be playing around with big weapons that is kind of cool it is interesting that venom actually has slightly more hp than you might expect from a kind of human character but then again you've got the venom symbiote so maybe that's not terribly surprising after all and then we've got Mad Titan Shadow. Now, this is coming in August, which means as it stands at the moment, we're keeping to the month-per-month -month release. June gives us Drax. July gives us Venom. Although, again, some people have already got Venom. And then August gives us Mad Titan Shadow, which is the next big box expansion. Now, this, like all the big box expansions, is giving us two new heroes and five new villains now the heroes we have actually been shown they are adam warlock and spectrum adam warlock is already we've not seen all that much remember but adam warlock is already getting people very very excited indeed because although the stats are pretty terrible once during your turn you may or during your phase discard a card from your hand and then an aggression card deals two damage to an enemy etc but you also have to include an equal number of cards from all four aspects when building your Adam Warlock deck. Which means you are going to be able to build the kind of deck with Adam Warlock that you cannot build with other characters. Plus you've got a built in way to get around status cards. There are so many things to like about Adam Warlock. Personally I am very excited about Soul World. Because after your deck runs out of cards you place a soul counter here. But then there's an alter ego action that lets you exhaust it remove a soul counter, and completely heal? Yep. I think there are um, many things which we should be getting excited about here in terms of Adam Warlock. This looks like... Well, frankly, it looks like one of the most exciting characters we've seen so far. If nothing else, I think this is a reason to think about picking up this particular set. I am very excited about this, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we also have Monica Rambeau or Spectrum. And essentially, she is built around energy cards. So although you've got terrible stats, you always have one of these energy cards. And the energy cards are actually kind of ridiculous because things like Gamma give you plus two attack. But when you change to the form, you deal one damage to an enemy. Things of that nature. So that one is also looking fun. Not Adam Warlock fun, but pretty fun nonetheless. Now, the scenarios we have actually been shown, there is one built around Proxima Midnight and Corvus Glaive as a double axe. And there is one built around Thanos as well. And Thanos is then coming in with the Infinity Stones. And, with the, and that will actually form its own kind of deck. So that sounds kind of terrifying slash fun. And obviously Thanos does come in with the Infinity Gauntlet, bumping up the stats and resolving the Infinity Stones in play. And there are going to be a lot of things going on here. Plus Thanos cannot be confused or stunned just in case Thanos wasn't looking awkward enough as it is. Now, we've not actually had the other scenarios confirmed. Sorry, I'm lying to you. We have. Ebony Moore is having its own scenario. We have been told about Ebony Moore. 
which is all dealing with fun little spell cards and, and having fun along those lines. My apologies, we absolutely have seen Ebony Moore. That is one of the ones we were shown right off the bat. I apologize. But there are still two scenarios we don't know. Now, looking at the box, I would imagine that one of them would be Supergiant. And the other one would be Black Dwarf. Because remember, we've got five members of the Black Order plus Thanos. But we know that Corvus Glaive and Proxima Midnight are in the same scenario. So that would work. There is a possibility that they actually combine those other two characters and give you a second Thanos. Like we got a second Collector in Galaxy's Most Wanted. I suppose that is one of those things we will have to wait and see. Now that's what we know. Those are the releases that have been confirmed. The other thing we have been told, and this is official, this was in the reveal of Galaxy's Most Wanted, that after Mad Titan Shadow, we will get four hero packs. For anyone wondering, yes, that is an awful lot of hero packs. It's been a while since we had Kang that was the last scenario pack. So we don't have another scenario pack coming for a while. Assuming we carry on the one per month release schedule then that gives us hero packs in september october november and december and we're not getting another scenario pack until january at the earliest now we don't quote unquote know what these hero packs are but and this is where the spoilers kick in although if you're on this channel you've probably seen them already if i'm honest with you but if you do want to avoid the spoilers now would be the time to politely back away because it seems like they are going to be nebula valkyrie War Machine and Vision. Now, this leak also did show off the Thanos box, Mad Titan Shadow, and that has absolutely proven to be true at this stage. So, given that one part of the leak has proven to be true, that really does give credence to the fact that the rest of the leak may well be true. But we can also take a look at this Champions Organized Play Kit leak, which was posted on the Facebook group, which does show alternate art promos for Valkyrie, Nebula, War Machine, and Thanos. And that means that essentially all but Vision are confirmed. But if Valkyrie, Nebula, War Machine, and Mad Titan Shadow is real, I would find it very very unlikely that vision wouldn't be real given that vision is not one of the old and art cars there it might be fair to assume that vision will be the fourth one of these released but we really don't know the scenario pack which was leaked along with the rest of these and again this was all on april fool's day so you can imagine why some people took a while to believe it was the red hood scenario pack now, presumably, if we've been officially told, I mean, the wording they used was, and look for more mighty heroes to join the ranks of Adam Warlock and Spectrum with the release of four subsequent hero packs. So that basically tells us that the next four releases after the Mad Titan Shadow will be hero packs. What that means is we shouldn't expect Red Hood until those other four scenario packs have all actually gone and been released, which is fine. I can wait. I'm a, um, I'm a patient dude. I can live with it. But I think it's fair to say that those are the next releases coming. Again, these are not official. They are not confirmed. But we do have pretty good reason to believe that they are true. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what's coming out in Marvel Champions. That's what has gone and been confirmed. And the credible rumors that we have. But now I want to hear from you guys. Which of these are you looking forward to? Which are you going to be having a good old play with? Which ones are you going to leave on the shelf? Because you've got better things to do. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Marvel Champions and a whole bunch of other games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.